Hello, Darkman Doll here. I just wanted to show you some of the art that I have available on my Etsy shop. If you guys would feel free to go over there and check it out. And do remember that you get free shipping and you get a free handmade gift with every purchase. So, with that said, let me show you the first thing that, um, that I finished and I was really proud of. Um, all of the creations I make, I'm really proud of after I finish them. But um, I just want to say before I start um, showing you any of my art that all the art that I create is channeled through my ancestors, through specific gods and goddesses, through the angelic realm, through the fairy realm, through benevolent uh, beings from other planets. That's where, that's where all of this comes from. And it also comes from me, too, of course. But that's where it's coming from. So it's not just some rinky-dink piece of whatever that I'm making. Each and every piece of artwork that you purchase from me has a spiritual and symbolic meaning to it. So I um, just want to let you guys know that. It's not something you want to give to your uh, little baby to play with or your dog as a chew toy. So, <laughs> so with that said, let me get on into it. The first piece that I want to show you is a necklace that I made. I did a video about this necklace, just a little short video. Um, and um, it's still available on my shop. It's dedicated to uh, a steroid wind slash the dark moon goddess. And it has amethyst. Um, it also has um, agate and bird's nest agate in the beads. It's consisted of uh, fabric beads that I made myself, hand sewn. And um, here's the goddess charm at the bottom. If you want to see more photos, you can go to my Etsy shop or you can go to my Instagram. So, And all those links will be in the description below. It's a one-size-fits-all uh, necklace. I'm going to show you what it looks like by putting it on. So you could wear it long like this if you wanted to. So here you see the cauldron on here for Sir Edwin. I don't know if you can see it really well. You can wear it long like this or you can double it up so if you wanted to. But yeah, it's a one size fits all. Anybody can fit it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what size your neck is. You can fit this. <laughs> so check this out on my Etsy shop. Um, we got next here. And for those who want to get ahead of the game with uh, the holiday season with Christmas or in winter solstice, I have a bunch of um, handmade fabric snowmen ornaments. They're pretty cool. They're a little shaman, uh, shaman snowmen. Um, yep. Yeah. Here's one of them. <laughs> He's got a shaman coat on. And all of this, all the fabrics I use to make these snowmen are recycled upcycle fabrics and the, um, the doll itself was hand sewn and hand embroidered. That's one of them. Here's another one. Another shaman uh, snowman with the little mushroom on the bottom there and a candy cane. <laughs> then there's the other side of them. His shaman coat off to the side there. And he's got a pentagram on the back for protection. You can put that on your um, on your tree. And uh, here's this one, the last one, the third one. So yeah. I had fun making these, so. Um, the hanger on there is made from uh, hemp twine, so it's, I like to work with uh, all kinds of fabrics. But my favorite fabrics are usually the natural fabrics, but I do use all fabrics. Um, I have one little one, too, here that I haven't posted yet, though. This one's kind of cute. <laughs> this one's uh, kind of reminiscent of that movie that I really like called The Snowman. It's a classic movie. So, yeah. All right. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Here's a piece I really, really am happy about turned out. Um, it's, it's a piece that I've been working on for years and years. Um, mainly because I've ran out of, I would run out of materials to finish it. But this is a shamanic bag that I made using one of my hand-sewn dolls that I glued onto the fa this fabric. And then I painted the, the fabric 
and everything with acrylic paints. I coated it with Mod Podge, which is a sealant, so it makes it uh, water resistant. I don't know about water repellent, but water resistant. So, and then here's the other side with the goddess on here on this side, the snake goddess, which I made myself as well. And then I sewed this doll onto the bag. So, and this bag you can actually open it up and put things in it. So, if you're a very spiritual person, a shaman, a psychic, uh, a witch, um, practice uh, voodoo, hoodoo, whatever, you could put like your herbs in here or your, your potions or whatever in this bag. This bag is not intended for uh, regular usage like um, going to the grocery store and stuff like that. This is not what this bag is about. This bag is a spiritual bag. So, um, I have this on sale on my Etsy shop now. Yep, and this was this came into being uh, over uh, several years of working on it. A lot of my art is now um, mixed media art. So a lot of my art now is mixed media art. It is um, because it reflects a lot of what's going on right now in my life. For instance, I go on these walks around the neighborhood and I see all kinds of things that inspire me, um, like. I find little washers, metal washers, and, and metal bits, and I've been incorporate, incorporating that <laughs> into um, jewelry that I've been starting to work on. So that'll be something I'll show you on another show. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section below. So here, what else do I have here? So I've got a bunch of stash jars, and stash jars you can basically put... Um, you can use them to um, store your pencils and pens in. You can store herbs in there on your altar. And this is the all-seeing eye. Um, and this is a uh, paper mache that I used for these jars. And there's nothing inside of it. It's totally clean inside. So you can put herbs in there. You can use it to, to you know, like what I did with one of mine uh, is that I... Um, it's one that I have for myself that I made. I just put my pens and pencils in here, see? Things like that in here. You could do that as well, so. And then if you wanted to, you could actually put actual food items in here as well. But if you do, don't submerge this into water or anything like that to clean it. If you do use like, put some, say if you put like sugar or something like that in there, um, empty it out and just wipe it out with a, a, a washcloth or a, a rag and uh, wash it out that way. Don't, don't put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> that would be a disaster. Because the eyes on here are made from, um, from paper mache almond shells. Back when I used to um, live, rent a house that had an almond tree, there'd be a lot of almond shells all over. And so I experimented with making eyes for the almond shells. And it worked out really well, I thought. So, so that's one of the jars. Okay, I got another one here. <coughs> and here's another one. Based on the heart chakra, with heart chakra with the hearts here. Um, and the eyes on here are made the same way with the uh, almond shells. I paper mache almond shells and then glued them onto the actual bottle itself. This is completely paper mache. The paper I used was from uh, an old farmer's almanac, so... So yeah, it's painted on the bottom, and it's totally, totally clean on the inside. So yeah. So, let's show you the next one. And I keep them wrapped up in a way so they don't get dirty or anything like that. Um, that's where these plastic bags come in handy. <laughs> Save the plastic bags if you're somebody who sells art. So let me show you the next one. I think that's the last one too. There's a total one, two, three of these I think, yeah, that I have for sale. Yeah, feel free to check out my Instagram as well because a lot of times I'll show you some um, in the process, in the making, works in progress, art projects that I'm working on so you can see how it's made. So. Here we go, here's another one. This is a, like, these are so fun to make. I really enjoy them. So, um, I could do another tutorial, but I think I might want to save the tutorials for, um, when I get my, um, my Patreon together. But this one was con 
constructed the same way as all the other paper mache ones, uh, jars that I've created. This one is a little different, has more detail in it with the beads, the beads around it and on the top as well. And another all-seeing eye design in the spirals that look like snakes for protection here. And like I said, you could put your herbs in here on, a, on an altar. Hell, if you wanted to, you could probably fill this up with, with wax and make it into a candle, because that's what I've been wanting to do. But. <laughs> Hey, if you do it, let me know how it turns out if you buy one of these, because that'd be cool, because I want to do something like that with these. I just haven't had the funds to get the, the, the materials to make candles like that, but that would be badass, so that's going to be in the works soon. So yeah, it's totally clear, nothing in there, totally clean, and these are just recycled uh, jars, glass jars, that I use to make these. So those are those three that I have on sale on my Etsy still. So please feel free to go over there and check those out. And I've got another piece here. And it's an altar piece um, inspired by inspired by Baron Samadhi. I could have put a top hat on him, but for some reason I didn't feel like I needed to. And it also reminds me of those Peru of some of the Peruvian art with the skulls, uh, with all the multicolors and, and mm -hmm. mosaic type of uh, thing. My phone is just uh, receiving some sort of spam. But anyway, um, yeah, this right here, basically, I was given some cardboard skulls, uh, really thick cardboard skulls. They're blank. And so I decided to have fun with it. So I painted this one, painted the design on there. The, the snakes, if you ever see snakes in my art, it's reoccurring, that's for protection. And the skulls, definitely for protection as well. Um, but yeah, this can be placed on your altar, and uh, it's really cool. I like this a lot. It really came together pretty nicely. I actually, what I did right here with the skulls, these are hand-sculpted polymer clay beads there that I made myself, and I glued those on there. And all this, this shiny and sheen that you see here, that's because I used um, Mod Podge, which is a sealant, as I talked to you guys about. It seals in the, uh, the design, the painted design. It also makes it water resistant. But don't submerge this in water to test it out to see if it's water repellent. <laughs> so yeah, this one's on sale too in my Etsy shop. And as I said, with every, every purchase you get a free handmade gift. So. And so, let's see, move on to some more things. If you want to get ahead of the game for winter solstice or Christmas, I have this really, um, I love, I love how this doll turned out. It's very cartoony. Um, her name is Maria Darkmoon. I use recycled fabrics and, um, she's hand embroidered, hand sewn. I use little doll shoes that I found for her shoes. But she has a little, um, storybook as well, based on, um, the reasons why, for the longest time, I didn't like Christmas. And so this kind of, this character kind of explains what I wanted to find out about Christmas. What, where did it come from? Where, where did it start? What was originated? So I kind of talk about that a little bit within this storybook that I uh, put together for um, this doll. And as I said to a lot of you guys, that I want to start making more storybooks with each doll that I sell. So um, I'm in the process of making two different storybooks for uh, two different dolls that um, that I'm gonna repost on my Etsy shop. So, but yeah, this one, this she's on sale right now. She's got the little Amanita mushrooms on there, and there's a reason for that. I'm not gonna read you the story. You will buy the book with the doll, and then you'll find out what the story is all about. I thought about if it if this doll didn't sell by uh, winter solstice, Christmas uh, time. I'll just sit down and do a story time with this doll. That's what I'll do. And maybe I'll lower the price on her a little bit. She doesn't sell that. But in the meantime, if you want to get ahead of the game with, you know, Christmas presents, that would be a delightful gift, I would think. <laughs> so, what do we have next? I think this is about the, the end of it all, of what I have to show you for today. Um, <clears throat> I have this, um, 
Oh, I don't have this on sale. That's not on sale. <laughs> not yet. I'll show you what it looks like, though, but I'm not done with it. It's supposed to be a bookmark. I've been making some really fat, like, large bookmarks. <laughs> but this is supposed to be a bookmark, but it's not done yet, because on the back of it, I've been liking putting uh, messages on the back of the bookmarks. So um, this one's not quite done yet. But if you guys want to say I have dibs on this one, go ahead. <laughs> I'll put it up to sell, or you can buy it right straight from me. So, so here's another um, bookmark that I made. And someone someone uh, mentioned on Facebook, one of my friends on Facebook said, uh, could you do something having to do with Lilith? And I think she was mainly talking about uh, like a doll, like the keychain dolls I make. But I thought I'd just practice this drawing that... Um, that got us. And I just found a uh, random photo on Google and I just kind of did this here. Made my own person interpretation of it. So it's a bookmark. And on the back of it says, Goddess of the Night, Screech Owl, the Queen of the Vampires, ex Exile from Paradise, Succubus, is the other word often equated with Lilith. She is whoever she needs to be. So that's what it says on the back of it. And it's glittery and stuff. So that's, right now that's on sale on my Etsy shop, if you'd like to purchase that one. And one more thing I will show you is this. It's my, um, it's a Baron Samadhi um, altar piece. You can hang it up over your altar. And it's made with, um, with love. <laughs> it's a hand, it's, I hand draw this drawing myself. I drew it myself. And then what I did after I drew the design, I uh, put tap, um, what was it, packing tape on top of there to secure it in there. And then I applied some glitter paint on top. And then after that, <laughs> I applied a coating of Mod Podge to seal it in. And then on the other side, you got the ve ve for um, Baron Samadhi on the back of it. And Baron Samadhi is one of the law of Haitian Vodou. He is the law of the dead, so. And I, I personally had a visit with Baron Samadhi, um, and I t I'll talk about that in a book that I've been working on, so. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today with all the stuff that I have available on my Etsy shop. I have more, but I'll just show you that, and I have more projects that I've been working on coming up soon. Um, I'll show you a little bit of sneak peek of something I've been working on. Whoa! Uh-oh. <laughs> but right now I'm working on this, this hand-embroidered piece of the eye. And just wait to see what that's going to be about. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys so much for being so supportive of my channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, your support means a lot to me. Uh, it really does, especially going through these crazy, crazy times that all of us are going through. If you'd like to support this channel, you can go to my PayPal, my Google Pay, or my GoFundMe. In exchange for your donation, I can create a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork for you, or I can create a video based on a topic of your choosing. With that said, brightest blessings to y'all, and stay creative. Oh, and this one I forgot to tell you, this one also has beads on there to accent it. Yeah, I really really enjoyed making these. These are so much fun. <laughs>